who can turn the world on with her smile? Who can take a nothing day and suddenly make it all seem worthwhile? Well, it's you, girl, and you should know it. With each glance and every little move, make you show it. Love is all you really know, need to waste it. You can have the telling, why don't you take it? You're gonna make it after all. You're gonna make it after all. Hello, welcome everybody. Welcome back to Brace Yourself. We're back. We are back in the wine cellar together. It's been like a month. Oh, and it's been too long. COVID. Too long. I've been drinking cheap wine. COVID. <laughs> what are you doing? Are you drinking all my expensive wine? Is I that what you said? Yeah. <laughs> COVID. COVID. More COVID. Quarantine. Quarantine. And Travel. Then, oh, well, that was before. Then we yeah. came on before travel. And yeah. then we had um, snow. Snow. Snow now. Uh, so. Awful. Yeah. Awful. So, um, Hey, we're back. We're back now. We are. We are back. We are happy to be back. We have great, great guests tonight. Yeah, I'm nervous we have about two nervous. guests. We are nervous. Yeah, I'm, I'm nervous. You shouldn't be nervous. Well, these guys, these guys are big deals. They are big deals. They are. They are. We've been getting, getting nervous. We've been getting some big deals. You've been doing a good job. I, I have not been doing a good job. <laughs> I've been very lazy. No, I told you. You do amazing research. You yes, write that questions. No, now the pressure's on. Like now, I have to start asking like crazy questions, and that sometimes. No, you always happens. ask good questions. Good try. So I'm very excited. Uh, we have tonight John Edward Thomas yep. and his son Christian, Christian John, John Thomas. Thomas. So, and we're going to hear all about uh, what they're doing. We've got Judy back this week. Judy's making her Judy's, triumphant return. She is with her gem, you know. Does she have a good one? Uh, I don't know. I did kind of yell at her last night, though, because she was like. No, no, she's not prepared. No, she goes, I think, you know, maybe people don't want to hear me complaining. And I go, well, if you were prepared, if you took it even this seriously, then maybe you'd have a gem. Well, here's the thing with Judy. She has gems, but she usually tells them to us when we're done. Like, bring it back. Like, that's funny. It's like, oh, yeah, we had that. Like, this should be the show. It should this be. It should be. We, have, we yeah, say quite that. frankly, you and I have conversations. We're like, well, why did we talk about yes. this? Yes. Yeah, we do. Because we try to keep it. Yeah. Well, we don't tape. This is it. We don't. What you see is what we're getting. flying by the seat of our pants tonight. That's what's yeah. happening. So I have a couple of topics. Okay. Do you know what like, today's national day is? And this is not bad. Oh, no. Why? It's National Toast Day. I can't eat toast. That's a whole other That's topic. That's a whole other topic. And National Chocolate Covered Nut Day. Who, who comes up with the national nuts? day? Like, what made me think of this was last week was, like, on the show, it was National Wine Day. And naturally, that's the day. Yes. I don't have wine. Well, I did go get a You did one. get a glass of wine. Who comes up? I don't know. I don't know. We we all at school one day we all wore flannel because it was National Flannel Day. What? what? How do you get a national day? I, so, how do we get a national Annie Day? Oh, hello. Or, or do they already have one? I thought you were going to say, "How do we get a national Brace Yourself Day?" I would be just happy with a we need to like we a need national. To we need to. I'd, I'd be happy with a regional show. <laughs> <laughs> it's my regional day. It's my regional day. <laughs> it's regional brace yourself day. But National Pepper Day is December 29th. Could it be like like just totally oh, forgotten? Oh man, that? and we didn't even know, but now we know for next year. National Pepper. It's day. not it's Pepper the character Pepper, but it's a pepper. It's a pepper. It is. So well, we um, can make it. We should make we it. Do a national. national. That's what I'm saying. So do you know what I'm doing this Sunday? Is Pepper. No. I, I am going to a huge convention in Wayne, New Jersey. Right. It's on my Facebook page. Um, I think it's like a Comic-Con type of deal, but it's like iconic TV shows and movies. And it's going to be me and Tony Ann who played Molly. Okay. And we're going to sit at a table and hope people come and ask us for our oh, autograph. It's like Comic-Con and stuff. Yeah. I'm showing up for your autograph. I have pictures. Oh, Pepper. Pepper. Yeah. Say it, so, Pepper. How many times do you think you have to say it? Ah, uh, blow it out your old wife. How many too. times? Oh, you have to probably a hundred. <laughs> That's all right. Though. 
It's but, good to be a child star and be able to do that and have fun, right? I have no problem with it. Right. Hey, listen, I'm, well, I'm, me the I'm milking this pepper thing for all it's worth. <laughs> Did we milk a pepper? Never milked a pepper. <laughs> I'm keeping that PG. Yes, thank that's you. That's a criteria. That is a criteria we are going to talk about. Yeah. Um, we have a lot of people tuning in, which is really exciting. And um, we have, uh, oh, we have Adam's mom. Is that? No. Oh, so Robert Sher. I don't have my glasses on. because Robert Sher. Tony Adam's Ann, mom is DeRosa. Roberta Snare. Tony uh, okay. Ann. Who else? Tony Ann wants to know, you know another Tony Ann? I do know another Tony Ann, my, the first Tony Ann I knew, honey. Tony Ann was my student. Oh, you're the second. Yeah, she was my second Tony Ann. So, mm -hmm. so we have all these people watching. So I guess yeah. that means we should bring on our guests. Let's do it. What you do you say? Yeah, you want to give a little intro? I stuff? will. So they have some very exciting news. They are in the entertainment industry, and and John. Yes. Is going. We're going to ask him about the very very famous creation yes. that has mothers all over the world pulling their hair out. <laughs> Um, That's not necessary. <laughs> well, because you can occupy. You can. Uh, what better time now to have that than yes, during quarantine? Right now, which is so a huge thing. I want you to all please welcome John Edward Thomas and his son Christian John Thomas. Let us bring them into the studio. Hello, Good gentlemen. To you. Good to see you, guys. Great to see you. Thank you. So we were talking a little bit. We're going to probably just start with um, the the creation that I said has mothers all over the world pulling their hair out, but it's not true. It does keep kids very busy. Can you just tell us a little bit about what that creation is? Sure. Uh, when I was in college, 30, close to 40 years, like 30 right. years, right. Yeah. Um, I was doing a project with Elmer Skoglu. I spilt it on my jeans and threw it in the wash and I didn't know the difference between laundry, laundry detergent and laundry booster. And my mom had this box of laundry boosters. So I sprinkled it in, washed the jeans. And when I took them out, there were pieces of rubber flex all over the pants. Long story short, it was Borax laundry booster. I put in the, the wash and lo and behold, I figured out how to make slime. So I'm the person who created the homemade version of slime. Five years ago, we wrote a, my wife and I wrote a book called The Ultimate Book of Kid Concoctions, which, by the way, no one wanted to publish. We yes. ended up yes. our own publishing company, shipped uh, 417,000 books out of our garage of our old house, where my wife would drive the truck to the printer from Cleveland, Ohio to Chelsea, Michigan. And we shipped all of those out of our, uh, our garage and our house. And, um, and that's how it all started. And lo and behold, ended up selling six million copies of that book and opened our own publishing company and uh you know did the circuit did every talk show anybody that would have us anywhere they would set up a, a table or a camera <laughs> we would be there so because in our life you know it was the house everything we bought was how many books do i have to sell to pay for that so right, right. yeah our house we always say this is the house that slime built so so i actually watched the entire infomercial uh -huh. no, 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 was years ago. i watched that that's a tremendous vest you're wearing, yes. by the way. It's a fantastic vest. It is, it is but the you're doing all these cool things. No, it's not. I just. Oh, it's, I, another, it's another vest. So you had gooey gunk, the grass head guy, yeah. sidewalk chalk, the spongy ball. These are all just amazing things that you can do. Like Kid Concoctions is is these, the, the books, right? Yeah. It's unbelievable. So you were talking about um, like going on and selling. So you did H. GTV, right? So how did well, you know it all started when my, my wife and I just came up with a, you know we had this recipe and I made it with my kids and we had this friend who was um, a local morning talk show producer a guest had canceled and she said hey can you guys come on the show and make that stuff you make with your kids and I thought oh, I don't want to be on TV I'm too fat to be on TV nobody wants to see some old guy on TV so yeah long story short we we went on the show um, and they received more phone calls for our little segment than they had anything else in the show's yeah. history. And there was this guy there who said, you know, uh, we're opening this new network because the ch station we were on was owned by Scripps Howard. He said, we're starting this new cable network in Tennessee. You guys would be great. Why don't you come on down? And, you know, my wife said, well, you know, my family's from Tennessee. I, I, you know, there's not a lot of television production going on down there. So we drove down there, never heard of the network. Like, what is that called? H what? H what? It was HGTV. Wow. 
Amazing. We were, I mean, we were literally there when they flipped the switch, a great show called Today at Home with uh, an iconic television producer, Melissa Cross, who's actually working with us now you know for 4,000 hours of TV. Like this woman literally launched HGTV Food Network. And um, that's how it started. And then long before we knew it, we were on the new Donnie and Marie show. Um, Marie Osmond saw, saw us at QVC, um, which uh, we had pawned. My wife pawned her ring and we put together 3,000 kits, didn't think they were going to sell. Uh, sold out on QVC, ended up being on every major national. I mean, it was just, I kept pinching myself. I'm like, we make Play-Doh. We're from Cleveland. How did, how did this happen? You know, how in the world does this happen to us? And it's called perfect time. It's it perfect, really is. It's perfect timing. Now, yeah. do people, because now, you know, especially in schools, uh, STEM is very, very popular. And so do you get a lot, do you, sell to a lot of schools now for kids or is it still primarily well um, you, you know the books have been off the market there have been no products on the market for five years and we gave it a rest on purpose and i wasn't supposed to say any shows by name that we're having on the new network but i will tell you fair dinkum network will have a brand new reincarnation of yeah. concoctions that will be launching when the network launches and uh, we're so excited uh, to, to, to bring that back. Um, but yes, you know, homeschoolers, because it is a way that you can combine science, art, and math with STEM, with homeschooling, you know, a lot of different lessons in one project because to the kids, you know, they think with gooey gunk, they're making just fun goo, but it's actually a science experiment demonstrating how two liquids become a solid. So, you know, there's a lot of science behind it. Unfortunately, when we're on talk shows, we were told in the very early days, don't talk about the educational aspect because yeah. it, it makes people think of school and they get anxiety. Just make it fun. But, you know, there's so much behind it. And we, we're really going to explore that in the new show. And it's going to be kind of like a fun uh, uh, game show. Great so, idea. I to see it. It's going to be a great fun. That's fantastic. Yeah. That I, is my business partners for mentioning that. I wasn't supposed to mention any specific show. <laughs> it's okay. No, nobody right. will feel that. We won't tell anybody. I'm not saying a word. <laughs> My niece was a huge uh, slime fan for many years. She's she's going to be fourteen now, and I think between the ages of like nine and yeah, thirteen. How many pounds did she make? I mean, my sister had to buy things of Elmer's <laughs> glue this big just to, just to keep up with the slime demand, you know. But no, I, I think I think we relaunched Borax. I think it was a, a dying <laughs> product, and I remember we came home one day. And there were 50 boxes in front of our garage door, and they were gallons of glue from board, from the Elmer School Glue Company. Uh, you know, all of these different companies that would send us products. But interestingly enough, the products that we created in our books that were originals, the toy companies started taking and manufacturing and making into actual products. So our spongy flyer became the Koosh flyer, which was sold in wow. store. But because we were so-called recipes in a book, we couldn't copyright any of that material. So um, we, we didn't get any royalties off of that, but we quickly learned and signed a deal with a toy company and an arts and craft company. And for about 15 years, had a great run at retail and on, on QVC. I mean, we're just very, very thankful. It, you know, it's, it's a long story we could talk about another time, but the day we set foot on QVC, literally our utilities were set to be cut off. Um, we were down to our last penny in our bank account. We were going to lose our home. And my wife had pawned um, a, her, her ring, and we made 3,000 of these kits. And we were told when we got there, children's products don't sell well. Arts and craft wow. items don't sell well. You're here as a courtesy to this guy that we knew who sold a lot of product on QVC. We drove up there because we didn't have the money for airfare. Um, debit cards had just came out. So we tried to use our debit card to buy drinks and it was declined because we had mismanaged how much, so we didn't have gas to get home. This is true. So we go on air and they gave us seven minutes and they said, you're on for seven minutes, but time is money. We go, they, because they go dollars per minute. They said, if you're not doing well, we will pull you off. So, you know, we had done all these national TV appearances, but nobody knew how to get our book. So we're on QVC and the host was stretching the slime all over the place. And my wife's tapping me under the table, talk. Like she's trying, I'm like trying to get a word in edgewise. And then the host, he says, John Danita, thank you for being here after two minutes. And I literally like my heart just fell. Oh I remember my, my wife went to the bathroom. We, I pushed everything off 
I still get choked up thinking about it. I pushed everything off in the trash can. And I remember thinking, dear Lord, let me walk through this long hallway and get to the parking lot before I fall apart. I'm thinking, I'm going to have, I'm thinking, wait, I saw a Western Union sign at the 7 Eleven. I'm going to have to call my dad and tell him I don't have money to get home. Oh, wow. I'm thinking, I'm going to, you know, how am I going to feed my kids? And I remember my dad saying, so let me, he said, I sent you to college. Let me get this straight. You're going to support these children by writing a book telling people how to make Play Doh. And I said, yes, sir, that's what I'm going to do. So all this is my. <laughs> So as we're leaving, I can hear, you know, clicking of heels behind me. And it was our, our buyer. And I said, I'm so sorry. And she said, what are you talking about? And I said, you know, you told us it wouldn't do well. And she said, no, no, no. She said, can you come back in 30 days with 6,000 units? And I said, what are you talking about? And she said, didn't they tell you, you sold out? And I literally, the only time in my life I lost, I literally <laughs> fell to the ground and I just burst into tears. And we went back and sold. 10,39.95 kits in six minutes. And then they gave us the today's special value. And we sold over 100,000 kid concoction kits in a day on QVC. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. Now, it's my wife and I went into the car and I remember she said to me, she said, I want to say a prayer and I want us to never forget how close we came to losing everything. And she says, we can never forget. And then she said, just for fun, she pulled out a piece of paper and she said, write down 10 things, your wildest dreams that you want to have come true and I'll do the same. And we folded that piece of paper up and everything on there was so impossible or inconceivable. Like I would say, like, I want to produce a show on Broadway. I want my own TV show. I want my own theme park attraction. I want this award, that award. And over the course of pulling that list out every day and keeping us on track after 12 years, everything on that list came true. That's and amazing. it was, yeah, it was just, but you know, we came so close. That's why I tell anybody, if you have a dream, it's not easy. You know, right. I think you get pushed to the edge, but it was, uh, it was a fun 15 years. It really, it really was. That is an amazing, an amazing, amazing story. story. That really is. I mean, to just get that close and feel like yeah. that was it, my shot, it didn't work. And then that's like a TV show right there. There you, you go. There you go. Yeah. Out in those two minutes. Go ahead. Do you think you sold out in those two minutes? And that's why they were like, hey, thanks. But no, that's why? That's why we had, I had no clue. We had sold out right. because we had done some of these like HGTV appearances, but they, you know, HGTV was like in 30,000 homes, but nobody knew how to get the book. So right. the minute it flashed across the screen, people were like, oh, there's how you can buy it because we couldn't get in retail stores. I mean, we didn't right. know how to do that. And so then QVC became our outlet. And then, you know, then an infomercial company came along and then, Dollywood came along and said, can we make a section of the park? After yeah. you walked, and it just kind of grew from there. Can we talk about Dollywood for a minute? Yes, we got to meet Dolly and he, he sang with her. He sang with did her. You really? yeah, did you really? He did when he was a little boy. Well, I, I will say right now, I don't, I don't remember any of it, but um, <laughs> I was two and she apparently asked me what my favorite song was by her and she did not know I grew up with her music. So I was able to sing through a whole verse of one of her songs and then she gave me a kiss after that. Oh my gosh, that's There's amazing. Picture. Yeah, we have a picture. We yeah. have a picture of us with Dolly. And she, she came, you know, the funny story is she came opening day. So my wife and I were sitting in this barn at Dollywood. I don't mean that disrespectfully. It's like a building built to look like a barn. And the air condition had gone out and it was like 96 degrees. And I had sweat rolling down under my, <laughs> my front of my chest. I mean, I looked like I had been run over by a, by a truck. I mean, we looked horrible. And as we're leaving the park, they said, Dolly's here to see you guys. And I'm like, no, no, this can't be <laughs> Wow. And I'm like, they're like, no, you need to come now. You only have a few minutes. And we kind of all ran into that building. And that's when yes. she asked him, you know, if, she, if he knew her song. And, and she's, he sang with her. And she was just so kind and so ingratiating. I'll, I'll never forget it. That is amazing. That's, amazing. that's great. How long was the attract? Is the attraction still there or was it there? It is not. We were there during Kids Fest for about six years. And it okay. did so well there that the, they then uh, opened at Dollywood Sister Park, Silver Dollar City. And Branson, Missouri, we had about a, a six-year run there. And, of course, Christian would have fun running through the theme parks. <laughs> well, Mom, well, Mom, it worked. <laughs> so, so, Christian, what was that like growing up in that kind of life? Because you were young uh, when, when Mom and Dad were struggling, right? Mm -hmm. And then now you're, you're meeting uh, Dolly Parton. You're singing songs with her. 
your performing. Was that always something that you thought because you grew up, that's what you wanted to do? Or did you definitely know at some point, like when did you realize this is what I want to do? I actually, it's so funny. So my dad took me to my first vocal class when I was about, I think four or five years old. And at first I thought that, um, at first I thought maybe this was something that I wanted to explore too, but I didn't think it was going to be like a whole thing. Like I didn't think I was gonna go and perform at like multiple venues or anything like that. Um, but then give it a couple of years later, I performed my first time at a mall um, and people were just saying things like, oh, like you should be doing more things with him and et cetera. So then I started doing theater. Then I started doing like my um, cabaret acts uh, with a group called Iconica. Um, and then it just kind of, it was like a snowball effect, you know? So I that just kept to doing- happen for the Thomases. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How was that? Yeah, really. I did, mean, you, did you ever try out for like, did you have the thought of like American Idol or anything like that? Did you ever do that? I'm sorry, what was that? Did you ever try out for like American Idol or one of the shows like that? Did you, was very that a thought? Funny. Um, I actually did when I was very younger. Um, when I was 12 years old, I actually auditioned for America's Got Talent. Did you? <laughs> yes, I did. Um, but it was um, a step-by-step process um but i did not get aired on tv unfortunately but i did audition he got the, he got yeah. through like five phases but yeah you didn't get to the tv phase no not yet he was so young it was still, yeah, it, was still well, it was fun just to go there and wait in line with everybody I oh, was, sure, absolutely <laughs> thousands and thousands of people you know but uh yeah. hey you got in and you auditioned which i'm sure a lot of people just get turned away before they even get that roseanne i have to tell you something not to interrupt no go ahead but I have to say something. In, I think, the late 1970s, you actually came to Cleveland, Ohio. I did. To the music hall. And I saw you. <laughs> oh! As Annie. Oh, was, my gosh. It was my first ever show. And I had never seen kids <laughs> on stage before. And, my, my, and I, I watched that show. And I had, I, I remember feeling like I was going to cry and not knowing why. It was just a sense of excitement and so overwhelming that when I walked out of that theater, I said to my mom, I said, I know I can't be an Annie, but I know I want to have something to do with this business for the rest of my life. And it really yeah. just made such an impact on me. And, and it was, I, I can't even tell you how overwhelming it is. I'm sure you hear those stories all the time because you, you've toured, but that was really the show that kind of started all of this for us. So I I owe you a big thank you because you're the one that introduced me awesome. to this entire world. Well, you're gonna wow, make her that cry. is amazing. It really is. And you still have that program. I can't even believe that. <laughs> I am you have, you have to see the cover. So how many times do you think a kid looked through <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God. I have a question though, how did Annie's hair go from yellow to orange? Over the years. Yeah, I don't know. Well, over the years, you know, creative license. You know, it's it's funny, John, that you say that because um, the very first show I ever saw was Annie. And my mom took me and I sat in the audience and I kept leaning over saying, Mom, um, I want to be Annie. She was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> no, I won't, I'm going to do that. I'm going to be Annie. And she and I just I just pushed her and um, and I was Annie. And I remember Cleveland. I, I remember it. We, we were there for a little while. We were there. That was one of our longer stays. I think we were there two weeks. Yeah. And um, oh my gosh, I can't believe you saw it. I'm floored. I did. <laughs> you know, I, the theater scene in Cleveland has changed. I don't know if you knew this. We're now the second largest performing arts district outside of Broadway. So there wow. is now a whole new area. The, the theater you were in actually is, uh, it's still there, but they don't use it anymore. There are five or six theaters in a block district that constantly hosts Broadway shows and wow. after COVID. But yeah, I just thought that was so exciting. So that is super exciting. Oh my gosh. Look at that. That. Oh my God. I'm never gonna hear the end of this. <laughs> so I owe you a royalty. Well, <laughs> that's awesome. So um how did you then segue from kid concoctions right. to getting involved with Broadway? Or Broadway shows. I had, it's a long story, but I had always produced and done shows and had been in shows as a kid. 
Um, when I was 18, I cashed advance 50 credit cards. I worked for my dad's store and I would answer the store and say, yes, he's the manager. He makes, you know, hundreds some thousand a year. So I Playhouse Square Center was opening in Cleveland, which is the complex I told you about back in 1989. And wow. I produced a show called Side by Side by Sondheim. And mm -hmm. I had read in Variety that a new tour had been launched directed by Rob Marshall, starring Paige O'Hara, Kurt Peterson, and Marshall Waterbury. So I sent Rob an email or message and finally found his phone number. And we talked and I said, you know, we're opening this new complex here in Cleveland. And we'd love to host your show here. And then I called the theaters in Cleveland and said, we have this great new show that's getting lots of great press. We'd love to bring it you know, to your new theater. They had no idea. You really like to walk the tightrope, don't you? Oh, like an 18, it was like an 18 year old kid. And so, um, you know, we, we did pull it off. And I, I'll never forget when uh, everybody got off the plane. It was Paige O'Hara who did, went on to do the voice of Belle in Disney's animated Beauty and the Beast. Paige oh, I love that voice. And Paige said, you're going to be able to pay us, right? <laughs> First, they want to know where my dad was. And I oh, that's, that's me. And she goes, you're going to be able to pay us. We, luckily, we, we sold out. The show went well. And, uh, you know, that, that's, how it, that's how it began. And then, you know, we had done kid concoctions for years. And I said to my wife, I really wanted to um, return to producing. So I went to a producing on Broadway seminar in New York with uh, about a thousand other people, right? Yeah. <laughs> and um, as I was walking out, I remember thinking, oh my gosh, all these people aren't gonna be producers. You know, they're like, they, they already said there's like 40 people who control the business. And I went for a few days, so I was feeling kind of discouraged. And I remember I was standing in front of the booth theater, waiting for a taxi cab with my suitcase because they let us leave our suitcases in the lobby and it was raining. And I had my umbrella and this guy walks out and he said, I know you from QVC, you're the slime guy. And I said, yes. And he said, what are you doing here? How many times did lightning strike? <laughs> he said, what are you doing here? And I said, well, I wanted to produce. And he said, here, give me your card. If a show comes along that I think, you know, you might be a good fit for, I'll give you a call. You know, thinking, oh, I'll never hear from this guy again. Two weeks later, the phone rings. And the guy said, I have a new show with this girl who just won the Tony Award. She's a big upcoming star. Her name's Sutton Foster. He said, the show's Little Women, the musical. Do you think you can raise $600,000? And I said, uh, yeah, I could do that. Now, you know, I remember my wife saying, they're going to chase you out of town with pitchforks and, and torches because you're never going to be able to raise this money. And we did. We raised it in our living room of our house. And I, I sang the role of Joe March and kind of pitched it to everybody. And People bought into it, and you know we we opened in December. I mean, our previews in December opened in January, and that's kind of how we entered with the Broadway business. And then you know we had done licensing of our own brand uh, to paint companies and theme parks. And I thought, well, nobody's licensing Broadway. You know, a movie comes out like Star Wars. You have action figures and bed sheets, but you have shows like Annie and Wicked, and nobody's licensing them. So um, a friend of mine who lives here in Cleveland said, oh, I'm a, I'm a press agent for touring shows. She said, if a touring show ever comes around and somebody buys into this licensing thing, I'll introduce you. So she calls me and says, hey, Peter Pan's going out for its farewell tour with Kathy Rigby. Her and her husband, Tom, are producing the show. I want you to tell about this licensing idea. So I did, and we pitched Peter Pan, and it was licensed from everything from bed sheets to Madame Alexander dolls to Christmas ornaments, made a significant amount of money and Tom Cathy's husband was at James Niederlander's birthday party and was talking about how he was doing licensing. And somebody at a table overheard them. And it was people who had just bought uh, Broadway Across America from Live Nation. And he called and said, you know, you need to come to New York on Monday. And I'm like, oh, no, it's too expensive to fly to New York that fast. You know, we need like the two weeks out. And he's like, you need to get in your car and you need to drive here. You need to come here. So we drove there got in the offices, you know, said, this is what we were thinking of doing. This is what we did for Peter Pan. And they looked at us and said, we want to buy half your business. And, you know, lo and behold, we had offices a month later in the Brill building and they walked us in the offices of every major Broadway producer. And we started licensing everything from Chicago to million dollar quartet to, um, to Annie and everything in between. That's amazing. amazing. That's, and, and now I want to talk to, to Christian a little bit about what he's been doing. And then we really want to talk about the new, the new uh, streaming venture. service. 
we venture. Because that's very exciting. And by the way, if you all aren't paying attention, this is go that's going to be successful. Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And the theme, like take chances, right? Yeah. I mean, John. I mean, you just. I mean, and I guess that's the difference between you know having a real passion for something and wanting it is yeah. you will just find a way to make it happen. You have to try. And you know what I, I always say? We're, we're crazy. So when everybody else gives up, we just keep hanging on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Persistence, absolutely. So now, Christian, is is your dad your manager? Okay, there's a fight over this. <laughs> this is, <laughs> this is manager. an ongoing fight. <laughs> I, I don't like to consider it. I say I'm the manager. He says no. <laughs> well, you're already a senior producer, which we'll talk about in a little while, but... So talk about your career a little bit. Now, this song that you um, released. And video. And video. I watched the video. Yes. And you're the only other person who's ever recorded it. So would you just tell us, first of all, a little bit about it and why you're the only other person? Okay. So I was in school for music theater, and I actually found the song um, just through the school's inventory. And I was my theater teacher at the time. She told me to just try and sing it for a couple auditions. And I sung it for a couple auditions, you know, and I got called back and stuff. Um, so I was like, oh, OK, so this is a song where my voice sounds really great and my voice suits very well. Um, but I never thought I would record it, which was really interesting. And then COVID hit and I was just like thinking, like, what am I going to do? You know, like I can't go on stage right now or anything. And so something told me to look up just recordings of Lost in the Waves on Spotify or Apple Music and I couldn't find anything. Um, so I just thought I would go ahead into a local studio and just record it. And I had no intention of doing a music video, but then we had, um, well, that goes into fair dinkum. That's how that that's yeah. How that came. This about. actually ties into how we met our um, coworkers for think uh, for fair dinkum. Um, but what happened was they really liked the song and they came to visit us from Los Angeles. So and they had really great um, film equipment with them, and we showed them the song and it wasn't mixed yet, so it it was it sounded a little questionable at the time, and they actually really liked it and offered to shoot the music video for it. And we actually forged a really great family relationship with them since. Yeah. Um, and it's yeah. getting really great reviews. Uh, you know, I was looking through your Facebook page and everything, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm a stalker now. That's what I do. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's getting a lot of really positive uh, comments and reviews and people are loving it. And so that's that's very exciting. And and now to bring us to Fair Dick, because I'm, I'm curious, you're definitely a performer. I saw your recording of uh, Joseph's amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. John, did you did you take that? Uh, uh, no, somebody Maybe. else. Uh, <laughs> because they've got to get better seats because this one guy's big head was in the way the whole time. Actually, actually, it was your friend, wasn't it? It was my friend. She held yeah. her, she held her phone at her thigh because she wasn't supposed to record in the theater. Oh, yeah. oh okay. <laughs> so, yeah. And she taped, and she was like, "I just tried to get your voice. I'm so sorry." Oh, was that the close the close every door? Yeah, so okay, close up, the close every door. Yeah, and that was that was one of my favorite shows. I actually worked in Annie with one of the guys who was in the chorus. His name was David uh, um, Ardeo, and he played the Pharaoh on Broadway. Oh, how cool! Wow. And how cool. so it was. It was. We got to see him, and that was such a great show. And you did such a nice job on that song. You really did. Thank you. It was, that was a a great shot. That was like four years ago. Three yeah. Years, years ago. Yeah, that was fun. That was fun. Of course, I, I was stage I was stage dad then. Then I was upset that he got his driver's license because I used to you know, I, I I would miss sitting in the parking lot and waiting uh -huh. in the and as soon as he got his license, I'm like, what am I what am I supposed to do? You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. he aged down and need, need you to drive. That's it. But so now you're a performer, but now what is your role? So Let's talk about fair, yeah, fair dinkum for fair a minute, dinkum. okay? Let's sure. talk. Well, what it's, is that? It's kind of, and that's what leads into the music video. Um, you know, years ago, we our goal with Kid Concoctions was to create a wholesome quality entertainment company, um, not necessarily family, but um, you know, some a, a TV network where you would turn on the channel 
You wouldn't have to worry about same sex. You wouldn't have to worry about kids hearing the F-bomb. But, you know, kind of like when I think in the vein of Marvel movies, when you think of like your average Spider-Man, it's still high action, high adventure. There's lots of great stuff going on, but you don't have to worry about, you know, young ears. Um, you know, that's something we always wanted to do. And um, we were going through a transition stage. And I had a friend that I had met years before named Don Sullivan, who was actually the world's number one dog trainer. Uh, and he had his own TV show in Canada and Australia. And he had trained everything from orca whales um, to uh, sea lions and everything in between. Yes. And we had worked on a PBS pledge special with him because our kid concoctions pledge special became one of the highest grossing pledge specials in PBS history. And we gave every penny back to um, PBS, $12.5 million in the first year. Wow. So Sean's uh, infomercial company came to us and said, you know, could you do something like this for his, his dog training product? And that's how we met. And so, you know, we've been great friends for years. And I literally woke up in the middle of the night and had this crazy dream. This is the God's truth. But I was driving down Sunset Boulevard. And I, my wife and I used to always go to House of Blues, which is now gone, which was across from the last Laugh Factory. And I remember looking up in this dream, and on top of the Laugh Factory, there was a billboard that had a television network. And I owned the network. And there was a list of all these great shows. And I woke up in the morning. I thought, this is crazy. And I thought, but you know what? This could work. So I called Don. And I said, Don, I have this idea. I said, it probably cost a fortune to do this. I don't know if we could pull it off. But I said, what do you think? I said, I immediately thought of you and your family. And he said, let's do it. He literally had just sold his house in Palm Springs. They packed up, came cross country to Ohio. And that's how Fair Dinkum started just last June. I mean, wow. it hasn't been that long. And while they were here, that's when his two sons, Ethan and Daniel, who will be like the next, they had just worked on a project, I think with Bow Bridges in California. And these are two young guys in their early 20s and they love Christian song and they graciously offered uh, to do the music video for him. So Don um, and his wife Kay and his two sons and their daughter Elizabeth all came here and starting last June, we planned the network. We had planned on opening it in Los Angeles um, and launching there. And a friend of ours said, you've got to come to Atlanta. The movie business is moving to Atlanta. You have to come and see what's going on here. And I'm thinking, you know, we used to drive through Atlanta on the way to Florida. They, I mean, so he's just like, you need to come on down and see what's happening here. So we went there, not realizing there was a studio that then was called Pinewood that was renamed in October. It is the second largest motion picture studio now in North America. Didn't even start construction until 2017. Marvel, uh, a few years ago, has moved everything there. So all the Avenger films, Spider-Man, WandaVision, Everything Marvel is shot there, as well as all of these other major TV productions right out of Georgia. So we went to visit, and it was just incredible. I mean, it was brand new, state of the art. I mean, equipment and technology I've never seen in my entire life. And then on top of that, they built a town for all the celebrities and producers and writers to live in called the town at Trillith. See, we're going to have a you place to live. <laughs> and it, the town is like this geothermal town. So you could do like net, I mean, there's like no utility bills. The houses are spectacular. It's in this, you know, community of all of the people who work at the studio and it's right next door. And it's just, just amazing. So Christian and I and the Sullivans went down there and, you know, just fell in love with this place. Then we found out that Georgia was giving 30% back <laughs> on all production. So it was like, and the cost of living was 87% less than Los Angeles. So it was kind of, Kind a of no a no-brainer. Yeah. No you know, meanwhile, our business partners had bought a house in Hollywood. And I and we were like, uh, uh, so they bought the house sight unseen and from the realtor to give so they had to sell it. So they bought and sold a house they never even went to. So um, so long story short, we will be moving in Trilla Studios. Uh, we'll start pre-production this summer. Um, we'll have our original shows plus around 10,000 curated half hours of other shows that we've collected from around the world that are just amazing. Yeah, from around the world. Wow. Everything from reality shows to game shows. But, you know, the premise of the network that Christian kind of likes to talk about, it's really about giving back. It, it's, it's kind of, it's a little different. Yeah, we really want people, we want viewers to take away from every single show that we have on our network. So we always want people to learn something that they could apply to their daily life 
in a positive way. We want people to go away from these shows and just, I mean, put things towards their normal daily life. And you know, Christian, so. Christian's in charge of live production, so we will be recording Broadway shows. And oh, wow. I, oh, yeah, I don't, well, I, and I'll have to figure it out. No one has ever captured the real version of Annie. It's never been captured. The actual yeah, real about it. version. <laughs> and it is my goal to figure out how to have somebody come in and put that show together correctly the way the original Broadway production was, the original tours, like the tour you were part of, yeah. and preserve right. that because it's never it's never been seen. And oh, you know, yeah, it's Sasha, <clears throat> Sasha Charnin Morrison, Martin Charnin's daughter. She would probably, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll I'll have to, and you out. know, I'm just putting it out there. Go ahead. I'm the ripe age for Miss Hannigan. <laughs> And I, <laughs> <laughs> it is true. You've been, see, you've been in training. You know the role, frontwards and backwards. <laughs> I can go full circle now, John, you know. <laughs> so, you know, we, we are talking about, um, you know, we brought this up to the studio. And, you know, who knows? You know, perhaps maybe there'll be a theater built in the studio someday where these shows can be recorded. Um, you know, that would be nice to have that happen. That uh, would be amazing. amazing. You know. If, I'm sorry, go ahead. And uh, you know the one thing we are proud of, and I can't I can't give the names that I wish I could, is we have a new morning show, very similar to the View, but non political. Uh, we figure there's enough people doing the politics. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, uh, celebrity driven, so film star stars from film, Broadway, television, and even uh, a supermodel. Uh, but a great mix of women who came from nothing, and had a lot of obstacles oh, yeah. in their life. And overcame, and you know, just because we said family friendly doesn't mean we're not, they're not going to tuffle, you know, um, tackle tough uh, subjects. Uh, there's going to be a lot of things like that on the show, but it's really, you know, to give women a voice and help them be the best they can possibly be, the best version of you. And that's, that's what we, do that we want everybody to be the best version of who they are, and we want to focus on what we all have in common, not our differences. That's great. So. Do you have a duo? <laughs> we don't. We don't. And we're, oh. I will say we're developing shows right now. We have yeah. a lot, a lot so of this leads me to that things. question in terms of, it's so fun. <laughs> so um, demographically, so demographically, um, so it's a streaming service. Are, are you targeting any demographic? Are you, is it uh, a wide range of, you want everybody to watch um, that kind of content? How, how are you targeting it, that? It is. It's a mix of everything. It's kind of like when you think when NBC launched or CBS launched. So, you know, you're going to have your morning talk shows. You're going to have your reality shows. We'll have children's programming. We'll have animation. And we'll have, you know, down the line, some really great films and television series and live theater and opera um, and shows and, you know, even live uh, comedy, which Christian's producing. Uh, so, you know, we, we look forward to it. It's going to be a really good mix. And I'll send, I'll send you the trailer, but you can't share it with anyone. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I, would do that. I would do that. I'm very good at that, uh, keeping secrets for that kind of stuff. Um, so this is super exciting for you. Um, really amazing. You know, when are you moving? Well, <laughs> it's, it's, it's all, in, it's all in progress now. You know, we're, we're hoping the offices will be open in Atlanta in May. Um, we should have everything moved to Atlanta by May and uh, starting pre-production. We have an incredible team of world-class people. I mean, the best in the business. Uh, it's so funny because we've, we've been in this business because of Kid Concoctions for 30 years. We did all the top talk shows in the country. And I literally went back and called the best of the best people. Every single person we called said, yes, you know, we for something like this, we wanna be a part of this. So we have, you know, Produce, we have actually one producer who created the talk show format many years ago. This is the woman who sat down and created a talk show on the fly. And she created Donahue uh, and many, many other shows. So, you know, she, and we have the person who launched HGTV and Food Network um, with all of their original shows, uh, a great producer who, you know, created the Oprah show. So, you know, the, the Boost, which is the name of our morning talk show, and that stands for building on our strengths together, which uh, Kay Templeman came up with, one of one of our one of our owners, and uh, that's going to be our flagship show. So we're looking forward to that. 
Awesome. That's great. And, you know, I think, first of all, it, the world definitely needs some positivity, some positivity and that some would. programming that you feel comfortable watching with your family and you don't have yeah. to worry about, you know, um, inappropriate content because there's a market for that, you know, and, and people TV, you can see almost anything now. It's really so that's a really great concept. And that's you I just call, I hate to say family friendly because it, although it is. It's still going to be full of action, adventure, you know, lots of tough subjects. Like I said, like Marvel film, but it is, you know, if your two-year-old turns it on, you're not going to have to worry. You know, a lot of other services you do have to filter, and we would have to filter with our kids when they were growing up. You know, I, I raised four children, and we were always very careful about, you know, what we let them see until they were the appropriate age. And I uh, won't have to worry about that with this service. So we're excited. Uh, we will launch... We will launch in spring of 2022, and we will begin our first productions this fall. The cameras will start rolling, so that's well. That is that is very very exciting for how you, you. How are you getting the word out? Like, how are you gonna? How are you getting the word out there to the masses to let them know, like, hey, here's an alternative to some of the stuff you've been watching. Pick this. Well, right, right, right now, we're, right now we're building the network, but we will have a full PR and marketing rollout on a on a major national level. Awesome. Uh, there's really, really good partners um, that that I know will will help us quite a bit. Um, and like I, I said, it's just it's just it's very surreal, but it's it's kind of fun to be awesome. able to you know put together some of these great shows and go back to friends and people you know and actors we met on Broadway who you think you know this person would be perfect for this part in this show and and to be able to give people opportunities and get people back to work. Um, oh, which yeah, I'm excited about. Well, I think it also has a lot to do with the kind of person you are because you uh, just seem like a very real, um, honest, good well, guy. That's what fair dinkum. I know. Tell everybody what I know. That, mean. that means genuine, genuine and real. And right? real. It kind of wraps it up. There but, it is. You know, that's not always what Talk what hits you. in the entertainment business, and so it's really nice to see two really nice people with a, a solid, positive vision. Getting well, what you deserve. Well, I tell you, I invite you to when we get settled to come down and visit us at the studio, because that's what really. I've never thought in a million years I'd want to move to Georgia, but I will tell you from the studio to the corner restaurant, this particular area, um, the nicest, kindest people I've ever met in my entire life, wow. the hardest working people I've ever seen. I mean, it's just amazing that a place like this can actually exist and where people are happy and create, you know, that's what the town of Trillith is. The neighboring town is it's, it's writers, it's painters, it's sculptors. You know, they have everything from apartments to houses that cost millions and millions of dollars, but they want people to live together. Um, and it's such a diverse community. It's just absolutely brilliant. And well, uh, I would definitely come visit you and I would love to see that. And just don't be surprised if I chain myself to a piece of equipment <laughs> and I want to leave. And I'm going to want to do something there. So, <laughs> you can, and, and you have you have to help us get Annie Roseanne because I'm serious. That's something, and that's something that Christian and I. Um, that was the first show on the list. Don't toy with my emotions. If I would definitely, no, I would no, love I'm, to be I'm a not part of that. You know what's so funny is because we were working on the Broadway revival of The Secret Garden when the pandemic oh. hit, and it had already gone to Seattle's Fifth Avenue and Theater Under the Stars and the, and the Shakespeare Theater Company in DC. And, you know, I thought, you know, the whole reason I like Secret Garden was because of Annie. And I thought, you know, what's more wholesome, family friendly than Annie? I mean, it's just the perfect story. I mean, it truly is. So, so I, I, I hold me to it, but I really, really seriously would love for you to work with us to help make that happen. I uh, would love that. Count me in. No, it's not even a question. You know, so Christian, <laughs> Christian's going to harass you on a regular basis. Excellent. <laughs> I welcome it. I welcome it. Uh, gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I will definitely um, be on the lookout for everything and Christian for your music video and yep. continued success. And I, I do actually, I hope to work with you. That would be Absolutely. Stay, stay in touch. Stay in touch. Absolutely. Both of you guys. I uh, will. And cheers. I said, I seriously mean, open door. Come down and see us. Cheers. Congratulations. Look, look. Wait, wait. There's my job. Here we are. Ready? <laughs> oh, yeah. What's that? All right. All right. <laughs>
All right, guys. Thank you so much. Right, awesome stuff. Thank you so, thank much. you so much. We appreciate, appreciate it. it. Take care, guys. Have a good yeah, night. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Now you know I was nervous. Wow. That's what I'm saying. Holy cow. That is some, like, impressive that is... story from... I guys, mean... if you're not catching on to the theme that if you... It, you got to be a dreamer. You have to. So if you want to dream, you can do it. You can definitely do it. And I don't is... care if you're walking down the hallway and you're saying... I mean, he... he... We're the, we're, this is it, man. I just, I just mortgaged my whole future. He couldn't buy we a drink. Pawned, we pawned our ring. That's insane. People listen to that. That it was it's you an amazing, amazing this. story. It really and now is. to be able to do what he's doing and then paying it forward. Oh and, yeah. Um that's just like really some cool stuff. I mean, uh And yeah. and I'm sorry, but I, I'm still kind of like Oh, forget it. I mean, I'm never gonna hear the interview. <laughs> I am you guys still, are still watching. He saw me perform as that Annie in Cleveland, Ohio. That is unbelievable. Um, I mean, come on! Judy's gonna go nuts. We gotta bring Judy on. Yeah. We gotta bring Judy on. Here, look, bring she's fixing Judy. her hair. Let's bring her on. Yeah, bring on Judy. Judy! Judy, that's a story right there, right, girl? Um, I. Judy, what's her what? name? So, our guest. Had, my sister was here. I, I couldn't. Uh, uh, my, our guest, John, and his son, yeah. Christian. Wait a minute. Which way am I going? <laughs> Crazy. Okay. Please. Pardon my looks. I I had an operation this week on my eye, so I couldn't put makeup on. But go ahead. You look beautiful. Ahead. Mom, John saw me perform as Annie in Cleveland, Cleveland, Ohio. He pulled up the program. He had it. Well, that's why I just I did see that. Yeah. Um. What so What was he a kid? Yeah, he was young. Oh, okay. Did he come from Cleveland? Yeah, yeah. he lives in Ohio, yeah. Oh. And so, you know, you'll have to actually, Judy, you're going to have to go back and watch the show because it was very, very interesting. He, he, I, he, he, I, got a, I, I got a lot I'm going well, on. I, I just, was, but I didn't want to cry again. You welled up. I did. It was... Touching. He said to me, he said that... You're the inspiration. I was the inspiration. You spawned fair dinkum. I yeah, really. I got to get in on that. I'm just saying. <laughs> you better pull this together. You yeah. better get Annie. But he was, he wants to do a, a version of Annie and record it because he goes, there's never been a version of that show, the original true mm -hmm. production recorded. Yeah. And so. Really? Even the Broadway one? I don't think so. No. So, exciting. And that guy would find it. He would find it. If he, he would was find out. it. Yeah, he would definitely find it. A very, very, uh, very interesting man. Well, I mean, I we could have yeah, went for We could have just kept going, talking to him. He was really. Well, you could have him on again. Yeah, yeah, I definitely. Oh, sure. before the launch, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we'll go on on location. <laughs> we're gonna do a we're gonna road show from Atlanta. Yeah. All right. Why not? Hot land. So, Judy, count me in. Do you have a, a gem for us? Yes, I do, but I have to first start off by a few side things. Um, All right, first I want to just number tell one, you. Okay. right? What? I, I, a couple of people are, are on, and 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 Linda, uh, John's mom, Linda. Yeah. Uh huh. Just said, Judy, you don't need a damn thing, Judy. You're beautiful. <laughs> Gorgeous. And she's so funny. You should book her on as a comedian. But <laughs> thank you, Linda. Thank you for bolstering my ego. Anyway, first of all, I just took my blood pressure. Oh. It's in the hypertension range. Yeah. Mm. Welcome to the club. I'm really nervous. Did you do it you know. You're fine. Huh? You're fine. How can I be fine when my blood pressure is hypertension? Because you're nervous because you have that stupid machine. Let me tell you what happened. So I go I over have there. The machine. Listen. It's nerve wracking. I go over there last night to play cards. That's it. No, wait a minute. Wait, just let me say this. I could just see us on Friday night. Okay, ladies, it's time for your blood pressure. <laughs> blood, tr blood pressure Fridays. Wind well, up. we were playing cards, and it was me and 
Beth and my sister, my mom, and this other woman, Beth's friend. And all of a sudden, she's like, I don't know how to use this thermometer. And I got to teach you how to use the one, you know, you shoot like this. And then she pulls out the blood pressure machine. Before you know it, now we're playing cards on a Wednesday night, taking each other's blood pressure. She goes, you know, this is fun. We should do it on a Friday. And I'm oh, like, no, I'm not doing it on a Friday. It's bad enough you guys are doing it's it. It's bad all. enough on a Wednesday. This is what happens on what day? <laughs> this is what happens. I get my, which, by the way, I have fabulous blood pressure. Fabulous. I know. What was my blood pressure? Like 106 over No, years. it was like one. I, I don't know. I don't know. Crazy. I used to have good. When I, I smoked, I had better blood pressure than now. I've always my had the blood teeters pressure. on hypertension. Yeah. So I'm going to take it on like 129 over 80, which is okay. And then when I go to like get the COVID test, because I don't like getting my yeah. blood pressure, I spike. They're like, sir, you have. I'm like, no, no, no. I just took it. it it's fine. I'm like, no. So I'm always well, right in that cost. First yeah. of all, it's the I got care. an email from. St. Um, uh, Francis uh, Center, Hospital Medical Center yeah, on Comac Road. I have an appointment on Saturday, and so does Joanne, to get our shots. Oh. Very good. They came to us. We didn't even have to go to them. That's perfect. I don't, yeah. know, I don't know where it came from. So anyway, so I'm getting a shot. So yeah. I think I'll give you my spot at Stop and Shop when it comes Thanks. through. But you have to still call Edith and tell her. So anyway. So, so guess where I went today? I'm telling you, there's no limit to where I go. <laughs> Where'd she go? Uncle Giuseppe's in Deer Park, West Babylon. Oh, my God. And not only, not only did I find the most wonderful things there, I kind of almost got picked up by the fish man. Oh, hello. Hello. The fish man. He was very friendly. We had a good time. Was he like? Yeah. He's very yeah. lonely. <laughs> nah, he was fine. It was fun. Anyway, the place is amazing. Amazing. I got <laughs> What? I said Uncle Giuseppe's will be our new sponsor. Yeah, they should. Oh, my God. They're so nice there. When you check out, they pack for you. They, of course, Joanne had to buy the Uncle Giuseppe's bag, you know, the the bag, exactly. the grocery bag. Huh? Did, you cheap out? Did you cheap out and not get the bag? I didn't even notice it until she picked it up. So, because they give you a free... They give you free plastic bags. You don't have to pay a nickel. Rule breakers. Well, uh, you know, no, it's, for your it's hypertension. Wine is good. Little red wine at night. One glass. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Really? Hmm. I have what's left from last night. Maybe I'll. You should have a little sip. See? Okay. And because I have more than one glass, that's probably why my blood pressure is so low. Yeah. You're almost dead. <laughs> we're, we're, not getting, we're not getting any <laughs> pulse. Nothing. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it's, like it's beyond low. So, so is I, anyway. So, okay. Well, you know, uh, you know, you see this hair? They, yeah. her and Amy, don't let me cut my bangs. They threaten me. Did you yeah. cut your bangs again? Don't touch them. Blah, 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 blah. So I don't touch my bangs. I go to Donna. I get my hair cut. She does a great job. I'm sorry I don't look so good today. And, um, you know, I think I got it all covered. No complaints. They're ha very happy, you know, or so I think. Then I'm told, you need height. You need more height back here. You just have to do something to have the height. Roseanne, do you understand that you have a big round head. My head is flat. I can't get height. So stop hair shaming me. I like it. That's a, that's a great. All term. right. I will not hair shame you anymore. Well, I have a flat head. No matter how much I try to get height, my hat, 
it's like a, a mesa up here, um, a pampas. Uh, what is that flat thing on the mountain? Isn't it a mesa? Like mesa? <laughs> it's I don't flat. know. You can make the words up now. No, I'm not. No, there's never going to be height up here. Never. It's flat. All right. You got to tease it. I'm going to have to come do your hair. No. Right? But I was thinking about it. You had such a big head, even as a baby. You were, look at the size of that crane here on that kid. You know? It was big and round. It really was tough. Pass. It was like passing a bowling ball. I'm telling you. Well, you just so. went from your highest moment. My lowest. <laughs> and that's the beauty of oh, Judy. Judy can take you. You're up here. You're feeling good. And then, bang, you're, you're in the basement. You're inspiring new streaming networks. Just but you got a big giant round head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a big old soccer ball. I mean, you know, I'm just stating the facts. That's all. All right. all right. You asked for it. You got it. I did. I asked for it. I asked you to be prepared. No. I can never. I, I can't please you. I can't yes, please you. Remember my bangs were too short. No. No height. What else? Actually, your hair looks very good right now. Yeah, right now. You <laughs> just it. It's so it's much. I know. It's messy. It looks good. I know. It's better messy. Things, some things are better messy. Yep. There you go. There you go. Well, so, that was my day. That was a that good was day. day. Yeah. Thank you. Well, well done. You're very welcome. And what can I say? We'll see what next week brings. We will. Yes. Mm -hmm. Every you, week is an adventure. You're playing hockey for me. I told you about You this. did. You did. I just didn't know if it was definite. And then the season's over. Okay. He's got so one more week. Uh-oh. Got to call. Uh -oh. My replacement. <laughs> my, wait, and my, listen, my sister was just asking about him tonight. Oh. <laughs> he's he's infectious. He's been great. Sit down. <laughs> Walker doesn't have a wine cellar. Yeah. <laughs> now I know. Now I know. Although I did hear he was building one soon. He, he's digging out his basement right. as we speak. <laughs> Do you want to stay for Pepper Gets Peppered? Oh, sure. Wait um, a minute. Let me go get some wine. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Let me explain the Pepper Gets Peppered. Okay. What are you going to wait? Well, first, I want to talk a little bit about it. Okay. Did you try to look at the no, answers? No, I can't see. I okay. couldn't even read the name on the phone. So, this is um. So the theme today of the Pepper Gets Peppered is going to be famous father and son actor duos. I knew it. What do you mean you knew it? I knew you. So were you prepared? Do no, I didn't. You would think I would, but I knew you were okay. going to do a father thing. All right, so Judy, we're going to do. All right, cheers. Let's cheers. Cheer it out. Cheers. So we're going to do a the famous father and son actor duos. Okay. But there's a twist in actors, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you actors, father and sons. Yeah. I'm going to give you the name of the characters that they're known for. Okay. And you need to name them. Okay. So this is the names of the characters they played in famous roles. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you got to name them. And let's see if you can guess the movie as well. All right. Oh. Wow. You ready? Here's the first one. You ready? Go ahead. Yeah. Captain and Benjamin L. Willard and Charlie Harper. Oh. This can be TV and, it can be TV and movies. Oh. oh. Oh, I know. That's Charlie Sheen and Martin Sheen. And Charlie Sheen was in um, the show that he did. Two You're and there. a half months. Yes. Two and a half men. And Martin Sheen is in, well, he's in a million things, but he's in Grace and Frankie right now. Yeah, but he was Captain Benjamin Willard in Willard what? in was that in, where he was he was shot for treason or something. Uh, it, I'm gonna oh, say it. Go it's an army, it's apocalypse now. Oh, I never saw that. Martin yeah. Sheen was yeah. in who was in Apocalypse Now? Martin Sheen. Martin Sheen. He was? Oh, yeah. Hmm. What He's talking? Frank Costanza and Derek Zoolander. 
Uh, that oh, is so Ben Stiller. Ben Stiller and Jerry Stiller. Jerry right. Stiller in Seinfeld and Ben Stiller in Zoolander. Let's kind of throw. Hawkeye Pierce and Jack Bauer. Alan Alda and Kiefer Sutherland. But they're not father and son. I knew I would get it oh. on that one. Hawkeye no. Pierce. No, it has to be no, Donald was, it, Yeah. Well, who was in the original match? It was a oh, movie. Oh, oh, Alan oh, oh, oh. And, it, and it is Donald Sutherland. Yeah, it wasn't Alan Alda. All right. In the original movie, Elliot Gould. Yeah, but he wasn't Hawkeye. He was the other guy. Well, who was Hawkeye? Donald Sutherland. Donald Sutherland. Sutherland. Then Jack Bauer. What show? 24. 24. My favorite show. I love that show. Sheriff Woody and Sean Brumder. Sheriff Woody Tom is Tom Hanks. And his son. Yeah. Something Hanks. What? What was <laughs> it? Sure. You, you got it. You got Toy it. Story. It's Toy Story. And I don't know the son's name. His son is Colin. Colin. Yeah. And he probably got famous for Orange County, the role he played in Orange okay. County. Okay. Okay. He wasn't he just in um in um Life in Pieces? Well, it. Linda knows all the answers. Yeah. She's getting it. Go, right. Linda. You ready? Last one. Last one. Okay. Spartacus. And Gordon Gecko. Oh, that's uh, Douglas, Michael Douglas, and Kirk Douglas. Douglas. Kirk Douglas was Spartacus. Gordon Gecko was Michael Douglas on Wall Street. Wall Street. Greed Judy is good. Judy Judy's good. On it. Well yeah. done, Judy. Okay. Honestly, I good. think this was one of my best. It was one of your best ones. <laughs> it was one of your best ones. It was one of my best ones. Oh my goodness. So that's that's you just got peppered. I did, yep, you got you peppered. Got peppered. We did, we did good. That was that was good. So, wow, Judy, this was a Judy. You did good. Yeah. Well, I'm a movie trivia. Um, she person. is. She loves, she's very good at trivia. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Judy, you have to watch the show because I know your sister was over, but you have to watch it. It was a good show. You really. I got so watching. much going though. I have so much to do. Look at my table; it's full of stuff yeah, I have to do. Full of and games. Yeah, you don't have to do now, I have what? to enter the Marshall sweepstakes. <laughs> Take the survey from Uncle Giuseppe's. Take that. Yes, and um, what else do I have to do? I have to keep a record of my blood pressure, AM and PM. Don't throw that little book out. No, nope. like threw the password book out. Oh, Don't remind me. I, that was an accident. <laughs> and what else do I have to do? Well, I have something important to do, but the rest of the world doesn't have to know about it. No, we need to talk about we that. Need something for the imagination. Really? That's right. All right, Judy, here's what I want you to do. What? I want you to go and I want you to enjoy that little glass of wine. This is like I swill. How do I you want you to relax. I want you to relax because I don't want any phone calls at two in the morning. I have to be up it's early. going down very smoothly. Good. It really is. So. Call one of your granddaughters. Oh, yeah, that, that'll real, that'll. Yeah. No, who are, are they? who are they? Where, where are they? Where are they? Oh, here we go. This? All where right. This? All right. Oh, just by the way. What? Your dog. That's pathetic. She goes for a walk in a pouch. Her in her pouch. She likes that it. She's <laughs> very sure nice. She does. Oh, yeah, Mom. Well, on my walk, I saw a man with the same pouch, and yeah. he had it wasn't two me. dogs in it. Whoa. Oh, yeah? Really? Did you yeah. have something in common? Did you talk? We did. They have, we they're, did. They're going out Saturday. I have a date on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to the dog park. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'll, I'll go get my fish man, and I'll join you. All right. Oh, good. He told me he was lonely. He said Don't he was lonely. Don't fly fish, man. That sounds like quite a weekend. Reel him in, Judy. Listen, if I had wanted to, I would have had him right here. That takes plenty of fish, really. Really, to, to a, a new, new level. level. 
<laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. I can't get away from it. I know, right? Think about it. Oh boy. All right. All right. Nighty night. I will be I'll see you again. I'll talk to you later. Au revoir. Okay. Bye. Bye. Au revoir. Au revoir. You didn't know I was multi. I didn't know you were multi. Adios, amigos. Oh my goodness. This was a good show, Grando. Yeah. It's exciting. We had a lot of people watching. Did you notice the count? At least 16. 20. 20? We had 20. On her. At one point. 20. Yeah. That was we're fun. going places. That was a, he was a great guest. He was I mean, an amazing awesome guest. Son. I mean, just come on. Yeah. Like, that's really cool stuff. We're going places now. <laughs> you know, but you really, you you are a poo-pooer. Why? I was poo pooing. You poo poo. Because I was I like, oh, we, that. we need a crew, and you laugh at me. I need a tech, and you laugh at me. I want it. I want it, and I'm going to have it. See, that's the attitude. He wanted it, and he took chances, and he got I it. don't think you want it. And the, who said I didn't want it? Do you want it? I want it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I told you I'm not a great actor. <laughs> I, I told think, you I can't act. I think we think we're funnier than we are. It is true. I think we're funny, though. Do you think we're funny? Are we funny people? Mm. That's what I need to know. Yeah. Like Walker and Snare, they're funny. No, they're, they're genuinely they are funny. funny. You're funny. Com- <laughs> you are funny. Okay. You should be funny taking. Looking. You should be taking the class. I've told no. you that a hundred times. I'm busy. Black on You you know what? You need to start scaling back. Oh, you need, you need a little Chris time. Sure. You need to go pursue those work. dreams. I, I need- actually I came to the realization this weekend where we were like, this all I did was work. It's just continuous. Work, 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 it's no vacation. Healthy. It's not healthy. It's like, Cuomo, loosen up, buddy. You're about to get thrown out. You might as well make oh, people happy. Oh, yeah, you're going, you're going down, down, down. Loosen things down. up. Like, let the city come back. Let comedians go back to work. Yeah, let, let comedians let, go back on let stage, Let restaurants please. go back to life and open up bars till 4 in the morning. Like, who gives a shit? Let's get, let's get herd immunity going. Get your vaccines and get out there because this is yeah. really wrecking people's programs. Oh, well, I'm going to get mine. I qualify. I qualify too, but I take a certain medication every week, so uh, I have to be you two weeks it. off that medication. So okay. I'm not going to take it, it now. Are you staying off gluten still? Or I'm still, still off gluten, gluten, dairy, soy. What do you call that? Fun. This I call cheat day. Happiness. <laughs> um, right. Yeah, this is a little bit of a cheat, but not um, a big cheat. I have to tell you though, this has not been as difficult as I thought. Okay. And, and it's sustainable. I mean, there will be definitely, I mean, I'm, if I'm going to go to a restaurant and I'm not, I'm going to go to Zenoy, I'm going to eat pasta. It's happening. Eat you kind of have to. Like, uh, listen, unless you get, like, definitely ill from it. You I gotta, know. You got to live your life, too. You, you got to enjoy it. You got to enjoy it. Because next thing you know. Yeah. But, you know, us. swimsuit season is coming. Yeah. I did attempt exercise Spin, uh, once again today. You've been walking. I've been walking. 8.37 in a row on Peloton. Oh, my God. You're in this Peloton. Well, I'm just obsessed with it. I want to get all the trainers on. What? You're still obsessed. Huh? Yes. And now it's bad because I don't want to break. So I have this weird thing. Like, like you I don't want to break the street. Okay. Because then you break it. You got to start again. For, I don't want to start again. So now I'm forcing myself sometimes. And I'm really tired. But then I get, like, into it. Like, the other night I was like, I don't want to do this. I got to add, like, my personal best because I'm just... See, Once and in the zone, you just go. I get, I Zero. get, um, I'm easily swayed off of exercise. Like, oh, it's raining. You walked, you had your DCRP gear on. I so did, I wore my DCRP gear, I had my dog. You and have to put I'm, that dog thing on TikTok. That I do, I do have to do that. The, you guys, the, gotta watch that low. I'm gonna have to, I should have uploaded it. I, I'll next time I'll do it, but I have Lola's insane. She's insane. She is insane. I, I found out my, my. Uh, the woman who comes to clean my house, poor Marta, she comes to clean my house, and when I'm home on the occasion, when I'm at school, it apparently is a whole different dynamic. When I'm not home, Marta comes in, she barks a little, right. and then the only other time she barks is when she's vacuuming the couch, she attacks the vacuum. Right. But Close other than that. that, she leaves Marta alone. Right. When, you're when home, I'm home, let's just say man. there may have been a little broken skin and a bruise. Oh. On her tushy. She oh, jumped up. Oh, she's being bad. She took a little nip. Nippy. 
And I don't understand why, because it's not like, you know, Marta's not coming at me with a mop or anything, you know, she's... Maybe she's protective of you. She's That's exactly what it is. She's protective sure. of me. She's a little psycho, that dog. Well, that's kind of nice. Yeah, but I... I Woman's be best a, friend. It could be a lawsuit. Put her down. Do I need a lawsuit? Put her down. I don't need that. I would never put her down. I put myself down for a little it's bit. It's so hard. Dogs are hard. They are. Because you get so attached. And to I want to get her a, like a brother. You know, well, good luck in this house. No one's coming. In. No dogs can go around Hank right now. He was. He act, He went to Petco today. Ah, no bueno. <laughs> what would he do? Tell everybody. He made peepees. <laughs> Hank was into marking his territory. My daughter took him and said, I think she texted me, this dog needs to go back to obedience school. It was that uh, bad. Well, but he's just excited. He's in COVID. I didn't tell you what else I got, Lola, at Petco. What'd you get? Fine. You got her an outfit? Well, a dress? No. You got her an outfit? I did get her an outfit. But I got her, and I got a toothbrush and toothpaste. Yeah, yeah. Which I've brushed her teeth once since I got it. Right, but it's, yeah. It's on the counter. I, I have to do yeah. it. I got her um, doggy diapers. Doggy diapers? Are you kidding me? Does she yeah. have an accent? Doggy pant, pant. She's an excited peer. Oh. And then she pees and then licks. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen. So, <laughs> so then who wants to get a kiss after that? No harm. But the problem is they're they're washable. Uh, they're not disposable. You know, I, oh, wait, oh. wait. They're black. Why would you make girl doggy panties or diapers, whatever black? Why are you making them anyway? It's bad enough to make them for humans. I know. It's pathetic. And I put it on I put they're them on her. I put them on her to test and she walk, oh she's my walking God. like it's like putting booties on. She's, <laughs> they're, they're like no idea. I think I have to return them. I can't do it to her. I'd rather no, I'd rather totally have her torture. pee on it's an totally area rug. <laughs> I don't totally you torture. would. I'd rather her pee on an Let area. Let a dog rug. be a dog. And I not kiss her. That's it. Kiss Let her. a dog be a dog. Right. Brush your teeth, and then you'll be so fine. Love her so much. You're gonna let her kiss you all over your face, all over your big giant head. All of my gigantic head. Uh, mom. Mom, oh, mom, mom's greatest. making kids feel great about themselves everywhere. Self-esteem issues? Not, Not me. me. Please, in my family, you have to have a thick skin in my family. You have to have a thick skin. If you don't have a thick skin, you're done. You're done. Ooh, we are long today. We are running long. Yeah, we're going to wrap it up. 117. This, I think we got Listen, gotta... thank you, nine people. Thank you Hang to everybody who tuned in tonight. This was amazing. I will be back next week. Very possibly with uh, uh, my guest co-host again. He's just quickly turning into the Joan Rivers of Brace Yourself. Um, Mr. Rich Walker, I'm going to I'm gonna message him when I get out of here and, you know, see if he's available. And then March 11th. You got to watch your kids. You got to watch your kids. I, of course. No, 100%. March 11th. Busy? No, you're not. <laughs> Mike Rowe. Yes, the it's a big deal. The writer. The Emmy winner of Futurama and Family, Family Guy, Guy and SNL, SNL Weekend Update. Weekend Update, when it was funny. Yep. Huge. A yeah, huge another guest. Another huge guest. I'm going to do some research on it. Ridiculous. Yeah, it's, it's Emmy a winner. Emmy winner. Emmy just. These are big. He was actually just uh, nominated for another award. I saw it posted on Facebook. All right. I have to look it up, but he's got another award. He's like unbelievable. Amazing. I'm very excited. You're doing a good job getting guests. Thanks. Appreciate that. All you famous people out there, if you want to be on the show. And you should want to be on the show because like doesn't want to be this here. is no, I'm not going to say, oh, you can't say that. Oh, you can't talk about that. Anything goes on Brace you Yourself. You can talk about that. You That's about why anything. it's like called Brace Yourself because like, Brace Yourself, we anything could happen. Well, honestly, we have not been controversial at all. No. Should we? No. I taught politics once. I got an email for like, you know, a year. I was threatening to turn me into He was. You're going to get turned. You're going to turn you into Cuomo, who's now being indicted. Sir. <laughs> right, that guy. Yeah. Huh. How's that working for you now? Oh, jeez. All right, folks. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Thanks. Thanks we to will our guests. Thank you to our amazing guests. Pick up one and I'll knock it over. And um, we will be back again.
yeah. next week because mm -hmm. this is what we do on Thursdays. My favorite day of the week is Thursday. Everybody, have a great weekend. Peace, love, and happiness. You agree. All right, well, that's our show for tonight. Good night, everybody. Good night. See you. I, right. Yeah, yeah we're off. I think we're off. We do this every week. You, you, you think we know? Yeah, yeah we're, we're off. off. We're off, definitely. You were awesome. No, I couldn't do it without you. Oh, stop. stop. You're Come unbelievable. On. Stop. You're amazing. Everybody loves it's you. you. No, Everybody it's loves you. you. It's not me. It's you. It's Rowan, Chris. Listen. I think we're still on. I, no, we're off. We